the very good doggos of World War II. There are few bonds more sacred in life than that between a human and their dog. Our faithful canine companions have stood with us through time and often stories pop up of their heroic deeds. None so heroic, however, as the first dogs recognized for their bravery during the World Wars. These dogs followed their handlers through gunfire, shelling, and even parachuting from planes just to make sure they stayed by their side and helped humans to survive. During World War II, the founder of the People's Dispensary for Sick Animals, or the PDSA, Maria Dickin, CBE, wanted to recognize this bravery and contribution to the war effort. So in 1943, she created what is now known as the Animals Victoria Cross, or the Dickin Medal, to honor the animals that, in their own way, fought alongside us. We don't deserve dogs, and we definitely don't deserve these recipients of the award, who between them saved hundreds of lives and bolstered morale in the most trying times of the war. Rip. Unlike many dogs on this list, Rip wasn't always a trained search and rescue dog during the war. Instead, ARP warden Mr. E. King found the mongrel wandering the London streets alone after an air raid in September of 1940. Rip, sensing he was onto a good thing, attached himself to King's side and refused to leave him after King fed him some scraps of food. With King, Rip saw the process of finding air raid victims in the rubble of collapsed buildings. Despite no training, he quickly picked the job up. He began to signal to King when he found victims in the rubble, tirelessly working his way through smoke, fire, and explosions. Rip's overall behavior and success are credited with partially sparking the dog search and rescue training that began in earnest toward the end of the war. The brave boy was awarded the Dickin Medal in July 1945, and was later the first recipient to be buried in the Ilford PDSA Animal Cemetery, where he was later joined by others. Jet. Jet Aviada was a German Shepherd rescue dog who worked alongside multiple other famous canine companions, including fellow Dick and Metal recipients Rex and Irma. Thanks to its extraordinary sense of smell, Jet recovered 125 people during the Blitz, signaling places in the rubble where survivors and casualties were buried. From this alone, Jet had already proved himself to be an outstanding dog and rescue ally, but he earned his Dickin Medal for one particular act of bravery during the Blitz. After a hotel was hit by a bomb, the rescuers worked until they believed everyone was out of the debris. But Jet refused to leave. He repeatedly signaled to his handler that someone was alive and inside. Eventually, the human rescuers found a 63-year-old woman clinging to a ledge to survive. It took 11 and a half hours to free her. Jet refused to leave the entire time. For his bravery, Jet was awarded the Dickin Medal on January 12, 1945. Later, the Medallion of Valor from the RSPCA. And he led the VE Day Parade in London upon victory. Judy the Pointer Judy's tale is so incredible that it almost sounds like fiction. Born in 1936, Judy first served as a ship dog on the HMS Nat and Grasshopper. In 1942, however, she found herself and the rest of the crew of the Grasshopper stranded on an uninhabited island near Singapore. They only survived thanks to Judy's nose and digging abilities helping them find fresh water. After some time, they encountered a Japanese-captured village nearby, where leading aircraftman Frank Williams spotted Judy. It was love at first sight. The two developed a bond that meant they were inseparable from that moment on, with Judy keeping morale high as the Allies endured torture from the hands of their captives. To protect her, Frank promised the commander his own puppy, and in return, Judy was granted official Allied prisoner of war status. Later, when the prisoners were moved to Singapore, Frank smuggled Judy with them, training her to lie upside down and silently over his shoulder. She stayed like that for three hours, successfully remaining with her airmen. That wasn't the end of their tale, though. On June 26, when the POWs were aboard a ship to their new home, they were hit by a torpedo and started to sink. With nowhere to go and little hope for survival, Frank pushed Judy out of a porthole in hopes she would survive. Not only did this incredible dog survive, but later tales were told of how she paddled around the debris, keeping her drowning men afloat. Frank survived the sinking and somehow, against all odds, was reunited with Judy three days later. 
but incredibly, there was still more to come. Still a POW, Frank was sent to lay railroads with the other men, his faithful companions still by his side. Deep in the jungle, Judy faced off against an alligator, wild dogs, and even a tiger in the process of keeping Frank safe. Incredibly, she survived them all, as did Frank. When the war was over, Frank smuggled her for one last trip, back over the seas and home. Judy became the only dog to ever become a member of the returned British Prisoners of War Association, and in May 1946 received her Dickin Medal. Frank and Judy lived together happily until her death at age 13. Frank built a large granite and marble memorial in her honor, a testament to the incredible life the pointer led and the relationship between man and dog. Gander Gander, or Sergeant Gander as he became known, was a giant 60-kilogram black Newfoundland dog, arguably one of the bravest dogs of all time. Gander's story makes him a heartbreakingly worthy recipient of the Dickin Medal. Working alongside a Canadian regiment in Hong Kong, Gander was a resident of the Royal Canadian Air Force Station before being moved to Li Mun with his handler Fred Kelly. It was here that the big dog came into his own. On two occasions, he rushed the enemy, snarling and looking altogether terrifying, effectively deterring them from attacking his troops. On one occasion, he even reared on his hind legs like a bear would, leaving them to run terrified into the undergrowth, protecting his wounded comrades. But it was his last incredibly heroic act of bravery that secured his award. Pinned down on December 19, 1944, the Canadians were under constant grenade attack and men were being injured all over. 558 men died that day, and it would have been seven more if not for Gander's actions. When a grenade landed among injured soldiers, the brave Gander picked up the live grenade in his mouth, running towards the enemy and away from his comrades. Tragically, he died in the explosion, but not before ensuring his friends were safe. It wasn't until the 1990s Gander's actions were recognized for their heroism. No one had successfully campaigned for a Dickin medal for half a century, but Gander's story was far from ordinary. He posthumously received his medal on October 27, 2000, with his old friend Fred Kelly in attendance. He later called it the happiest day of a long life. Hey everyone, it's Chris. You're probably used to hearing me during our advertisements, but now I want to talk about something a little bit different. Every video we create is more than just content. It's a blend of research, creativity, and passion for history. We do it because we believe in the power of history, its lessons, its stories, and its ability to connect everyone. Sometimes the reality of operating a YouTube channel presents challenges, like the occasional demonetization, which impacts the ability to produce the content that we all love. Now we're looking at you, our amazing audience to ask for your support in keeping this channel, our shared passion for history, alive and thriving. We're inviting you to join us on Patreon and contribute to the ongoing creation and distribution of our history content. By joining us on Patreon, you're doing more than just supporting our content. You're becoming an integral part of a community dedicated to preserving and promoting history. Remember, every bit of support makes a real difference. If you'd like to learn more about how you can help, please follow the link down below. Thank you, as always, for your interest and your hunger for history. Thorn. Another German Shepherd, Thorn, received his medal on March 2nd, 1945, for breathing through smoke and fire to locate casualties in burning buildings. A descendant of the strong shepherd line bred by Margaret Griffin that also produced Irma, Thorn had a particular propensity for ignoring danger in the interest of saving human lives. His bravery was so that it prompted one regional officer to comment, the work of Thorn at this spot was the best I've yet seen from any rescue dog. Rifleman Khan, an impressive name for an impressive dog. Trained in patrol duty, Rifleman Khan later saved the life of his handler, Lance Corporal Jimmy Muldoon. His master was part of the 6th Battalion known as the Cameronians, sent to support the recapture of a Dutch town held by the Germans in 1944. Unfortunately, upon trying to reach the shoreline, Muldoon and Khan were thrown from their boat by enemy artillery. While gunfire and explosions sounded all around them, Khan refused to leave Muldoon's side. Despite his handler's lack of swimming ability, Rifleman Khan ensured they both survived that day. 
Taking a mouthful of Muldoon's clothing in his teeth, Khan forcibly paddled them both to shore and relative safety. From that moment on, Jimmy couldn't bear the thought of losing Khan. He begged the family to keep him, who refused, but allow them to later reunite for a victory parade. Khan was awarded his medal on March 27, 1945. A statue of Muldoon and Rifleman Khan was erected on the common in 2021. Antis Antis the German Shepherd may have ended up a war hero, but he was also a stowaway doggy, secretly smuggled on board aircraft by Czech airman Václav Bozdek. After a successful mission, the crew decided Antis must be their own personal good luck charm and named him the seventh member of their crew. Antis continued to fly with them throughout the war, accompanying them on over 30 sorties. During this period, he was injured three times, but never panicked, always keeping calm and collected in the face of danger. The airmen never revealed Antis' exploits during their active duty, only revealing the role the brave dog had played in their missions later. Antis remained with Bozdek, saving his life again after the war in 1948. A year later, in 1949, Antis was recognized for his cheeky but valuable contribution to the war, receiving his Dickin Medal on January 28, 1949. He is now buried at Ilford with full military honors. Sheila Unlike the other dogs on this list, Sheila was simply a pet with a good nose. A collie dog owned by John Dagg, the duo had heard a plane crash near their home in the midst of a fierce blizzard on the English-Scottish border. Sheila, Dagg, and a neighbor fought through the snow to reach the plane, but Sheila ran ahead and found four airmen who had survived the crash, leading them back to her owner. Without them, all six aboard the plane could easily have perished. After the blizzard, Dagg and Sheila also persevered and found the bodies of the two men who sadly didn't survive. Sheila became an honorary member of the Allied Forces Mascot Club and the first civilian dog to receive the Dickon Medal on July 2, 1945. Peter Peter, the Scotch Collie, was given to the services after he utterly failed as a house pet, fighting with others and disobeying his owners. After training in 1944, however, Peter quickly earned a name for himself as a determined rescue dog at the London Region Civil Defense, once working for 10 hours straight without a break which was unheard of for any animal. He repeatedly, successfully found casualties buried and even six alive that would have perished otherwise without Peter's quick nose. On another occasion, he pestered his handler Archie Knight until they unearthed what they thought would be a trapped human. It turned out to be a particularly talkative parrot. He received his medal and was presented to the king and queen after the war, even receiving a kiss on the nose for a job well done. Crumston Irma Another German Shepherd dog, nicknamed the Blitz Dog, Irma's search and rescue attempts during the war were some of the most impressive of any canine. Together with another dog, Psyche, she found 233 people total, with 21 living to tell the tale. Some of Irma's most impressive exploits include finding one woman who had been trapped between two floors and buried deep under rubble for nine hours, and finding a baby, a young child, and their mother trapped. Although the mother sadly died, the two boys survived and later were reunited with Irma in 1950. Another time, she refused to leave a destruction site for two full days, despite rescuers determining no one was left alive. She barked, pawed, and refused to move, insisting someone was still buried. Finally, the humans discovered two young girls, both still alive, who would have certainly died without Irma's insistence. For her bravery, she walked alongside Jed at the VE parade with her own dick and medal. Ricky Ricky was a Welsh collie working in the Netherlands in 1944. His job was to assist in finding mines along the canal banks for clearance. Immediately a popular dog, he worked alongside his handler, Maurice Yelding, who referred to him as cheeky as ever. Quickly recognized for his excellent sniffing abilities, Ricky was cool and calm as he detected mines buried deep along the banks. On one occasion, he was even injured when one exploded, yet kept his cool and didn't do anything that would potentially harm nearby squads. After the war, he was returned to his owner, Mrs. Litchfield, and later on March 29, 1947, he received the Dickin Medal in recognition of his elite sniffing. Bing Bing was a fully qualified paratrooper dog who took part in the Normandy landings alongside the 13 Battalion Airborne Division. 
the Shepherd Collie Cross was assigned to the handling of Lance Corporal Ken Bailey. He was one of only a handful of dogs that took part in the D-Day landings, and the only one not to disappear or be injured. After initially getting stuck in a tree, Bing went on to fight alongside Bailey in combat and performed a wide range of sniffer and guard dog duties. His work was instrumental during the landings and in others across the war, even taking part in the largest airborne mission of the war in March 1945. Brian retired in 1946, received his Dickin Medal a year later in April, and was buried at Ilford upon his death in 1955. Rex Rex was credited with saving 65 lives during his tenure. On several occasions, Rex insisted there were casualties still buried after humans had given up searching, forcing them to uncover bodies that otherwise would have been missed. His bravery was particularly notable during a factory fire, where Rex kept trying to go in and rescue people despite the burning roof collapsing. When the fires went out, every time he was allowed to return to the site, he uncovered more bodies and withdrew only reluctantly. For his efforts and bravery, Rex received the Dickin Medal in April 1945. Tish Tish was a mongrel who served for the vast majority of the war, beginning in 1941. A black mongrel thought to be part terrier, Tish was adopted by rifleman Thomas Walker. Together, the pair fought across Algeria and the Mediterranean, regularly facing down the enemy together on the front line. Despite Tish's busy service, she also spent time getting busy in other ways. Across the four years, she birthed 15 puppies and was often seen riding into battle on the top of a brand new sea, howling like a wolf and boosting the morale of every soldier she met. Both Walker and Tish had a propensity for danger, often charging in together to rescue wounded comrades, despite being under heavy fire themselves. Despite regularly being injured, Tish never let it deter her from being by Walker's side. After the war, she lived happily with her rifleman until she was laid to rest in 1959, receiving her dick and medal in September of 1949. Thomas Walker visited her grave at Ilford for the rest of his life. Beauty There was a third dog honored on January 12, 1945 alongside Jet and Irma. Beauty, a wire-haired terrier owned by Bill Barnett and a rescue dog during the Blitz. But with her own unique specialty, Beauty's focus was on finding other animals, not people. Thanks to her efforts, 63 animals were saved from premature burial. Alongside the Dickin Medal, Beauty also received the PDSA Pioneer Medal, usually given to people, and awarded unrestricted access to her local park from the mayor. She too is buried in Ilford Cemetery. Chips Chips was another exceptionally brave dog of World War II who had little regard for his own life when it came to saving his comrades. After protecting those attending the Casablanca Conference in 1943, he also aided in the invasion of Sicily. It was there that he saved the lives of his platoon after they landed in darkness only to be ambushed by an enemy machine gun team firing from a nearby hut. With little regard for safety, Chips promptly leapt towards it, and after a brief skirmish, all four members of the enemy team emerged, surrendering to the terrifying Chips. For his actions, Chips received the Dickin Medal in January of 2018. Because the Dickin Medal wasn't created until 1943, individual dogs from World War I failed to have been recognized. This was rectified in 2014, when an honorary Dickin Medal was given to honor all animals and the roles they played in the Great War. Today, dogs and other animals continue to receive the award for their heroic actions in military conflicts, sniffing out those trapped in the ruins of their own homes, biting those intending toward harm, and wagging their tails to those who have lost hope. Paw after paw, they continue to walk in the small footsteps of their predecessors.